Welcome to the Nick and Matt Show. Bringing the player interviews you want to hear and the hot topics you want to discuss. Streaming live on the Foundation Podcast YouTube channel, here's Nick and Matt. All right, so moving on a little bit from the discussion on your performance, uh, I'm interested a little bit off the course. Are you worth a $10 million contract yet? Do you think you will ever be if your answer was no? And then I have a, a follow-up to that. I feel like that's a question for Discraft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let oh, me Bob. ask this. But let, then let me ask this. Do you plan to stay with Discraft forever? You know, I'm very, very happy um, with the relationship I have with them. Um, they have been awesome, awesome to work with. And obviously, when I signed with them, initially, people know that they were not the biggest offer. Um, I turned down bigger offers to go with Discraft because it wasn't, initially, it wasn't about the money. That wasn't the most important thing. The most important thing was me working with someone that I felt like together we could do a lot of amazing things and do some awesome things, which I think we've, we've done pretty good so far. Um, so as of right now, I have no reason to think about going somewhere else. But at the end of the day, too, you know, like you can't ever say you can't ever say it's not a possible possibility. Right. Um, I always will keep my options open and, and, and listen to he hear what others have to say, uh, because one thing and I don't think, you know, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but one thing that I, I don't really want to have happen is where I feel like it's, it, it feels like it's just a little bit one sided on one, on one, uh, where, where it feels like both people aren't working together, if that makes sense. And that, that hasn't happened yet with Discraft. So I'm super happy with how everything's going. Yep. Um, but with me right now and how it's, a, it's an interesting situation too, right? Because initially, I mean, just as you know, there were some there were some manufacturers that wanted to sponsor me as a celebrity, mm -hmm. and I was like, no, 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 I'm I'm actually like trying to to get good, like I'm I'm trying to compete, and they're like, eh, we can give you a celebrity sponsor, and I'm like, okay, so that's kind of it's it's an interesting situation because that's kind of where I was mm -hmm. a year and a half ago, and a lot has changed since then, so. Um, it, it, you know, and again, like I'm nowhere near where I want to be as far as how how good I am, my mm -hmm. skill level. So I'm just going to keep improving and, and see where we go. That's a fair answer. Um, there are people in the chat that are upset that I even asked you that question, but I just feel like you bring more to the sport and you just answer. That's a fair question. Yeah. And you just answered it great too. I think you bring more. People to the get sport. upset with Matt if he opens his mouth. Yeah, don't worry moment. about it. Don't worry about it. I just catered to them. I shouldn't even have brought him up. <laughs> Here, how about no, it's this? A fair, it's, it's a fair question too, and, and it's one of those things too where I'll, I'll say this: like one thing that needs to happen is it's not even necessarily. If you look big picture, if you look big picture, if a company comes to Nick and says, "Nick, we want to give you free product," and you blast out three instagram posts every month and he goes yeah 100 percent." and they go to you matt and they say hey we want to give you free product and to blast it out three times a month and you're like yeah 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 and they come to me and i say that's going to be thirty five thousand dollars they're going to be like what we're we're getting it for free from all these other people mm -hmm. so if it, they come to nick and nick says that's gonna be five hundred dollars and they come to you, Matt, and you say that's going to be $1,500. And they come to me, and I'm, I'm like, that's going to be $15,000. Now, all of a sudden, like, they kind of have an idea of, like, okay, I can't just do stuff for free. Mm -hmm. So it, it goes in the same way with sponsorships where, yeah, obviously, it would be nice for me and my family to, to get a really, really big sponsorship. But it also does a huge, huge thing similar to what Paul's sponsorship did. It does a huge, huge thing to others because now others can be like, wait a second. Brody's, yeah. getting Brody's getting how much? And so yep. now that puts pressure on, you know, let's say Discraft, we, we sign a, we re-sign a deal, whatever, whatever. That puts pressure now on Prodigy, on Innova, on all these other manufacturers because their players are going to be like, hey, Brody's making this much money. Mm -hmm. uh, what What's going on over here? And 
what is going to end up happening is that's just going to be great for all the players. More players are going to make more money. And like I said, when players start making more and more money, now you're going to get people that are really, really good at sports being like, wait, I can make how much money playing disc golf? And now yeah. you're going to start seeing, I mean, how exciting would it be? Just put yourself in a situation where instead of having Eagle, Chris, Paul, Ricky, and Calvin, you now have 40 guys like that. Yep. How exciting would that be? Yeah. Well, who was the golfer? Who was the golfer who just won an event and he hasn't since 2019? Uh, uh, Austin Smotherman. No, just was it Rory? Yeah. No, who? No, Smotherman just won. Is Smotherman? Smotherman. Look it up. I think it's, <laughs> I, I might be saying his name wrong. Someone in chat probably will know, but I think yeah. it's, I think it's Austin Smotherman. Smotherman. I'll let you know if it comes up. So in that same conversation, though, and and thank you for that follow up. You do a fair amount of endorsements. Like anyone who follows you, social media, we see endorsements. Um, do, brands like Bushnell and others have started seeing value in our sport. Um, have you, on your own, because of what you've done with your previous work, sought out sponsors that you think might want to get involved in the sport directly through you or through the pro yeah. tour? Yeah, r- right now, like I've, I've, tr- I'm trying, I'm trying to get some people involved in the pro tour, and honestly, it's kind of easier to go through me first. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we want to get into the whole po- post-production situation, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's hard, it's hard to sell the disc golf pro tour right now to some companies because the reach is just not there. Right. Um, where the idea, this is why I'll just say this real quick. If we could get all the eyeballs into one spot, there are enough people right now watching disc golf that you could actually bring in a decent amount of sponsorship money. Mm-hmm. But right now, the eyeballs are being spread across too many channels. Understood. Yeah. I mean, that's, I that. yeah. We, in fact, in fact, I'll say this. So we don't go down that whole lane right now. You did come on one other time, Dark Horse style at towards the end of our show. And you did give your opinions on that. Anyone co- go back to the Nick and Matt show, find the episode with Brody. You can actually listen to his opinions mm-hmm. on that. They might have changed a little bit. But I don't know that they've changed drastically. Uh, pretty, they're pretty, pretty okay. similar. Pretty similar. All right, so cool. Rory, Rory was the one who just won a cha- uh, PGA event recently. Who? He won the Wells Fargo. Rory McIlroy. I'm telling you right now, go to Harry Higgs' Twitter. Harry Higgs is, is friends with this guy. And he literally just said, I, I remember seeing his tweet. He's like, I knew it was about to happen. Harry Maybe Higgs? Was, Harry Higgs. H-A-R-R-Y. H I G G S. He just retweeted someone. I'm almost positive it's Austin Smotherman. Maybe you want a corn so, fairy. Okay. You, he goes you, SMU men's golf. Let's go Austin Smo Smo. Okay. Smo, yeah, yeah. What he His win? first what? career win. I'm trying to see it. Yeah. The, okay. 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 Was it European I'm, tour? Maybe. It might be. Corn, I'm seeing corn fairy. Simmons Bake Open. Oh, Corn Ferry. Yep, Corn Ferry Corn Tour. Corn Ferry. Okay, okay. So okay. I was I, I was wrong. Corn I don't Ferry know what that I don't know what that is, but that is that is what. So if the Disc Golf Pro Tour was to have like actual tour cards and qualifications, uh-huh. that would be the people that weren't good enough to actually get on there, but are basically right in the bottom. So what would happen is, let's say at the end of the year, the top seventy-five. If you're top seventy-five in Disc Golf Pro Tour rankings. You get a tour card next year. Okay. 76 through, let's say, 150, you go on the Corn Ferry Tour. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the Corn Ferry Tour, like the top 15 guys move up and get PGA Tour cards. And the bottom 15 guys from the PGA uh, or from the Disc Golf Pro Tour flip flop. Flip flop. Okay. So they're I constantly thought... kind of keeping people yeah. kind of coming up and down. I thought that was the web.com tour. Maybe it was. Other... They, 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 the sponsors changed. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. So now the corn fairy tour. Cool. Yep, well, I guess exactly. I, I kind of have one last question and it goes back to talking about deals, endorsements, manufacturer sponsorships and everything like that. And you did talk about how Paul's sponsorship did help out in the sense of, you know, this is what he's making. He made it a public offer. Yeah. If I'm Ricky and I'm only making $50,000 a year, you better believe I'm pissed. So if you sign your next contract, whether it's with Discraft or it's something gonna else, public. you're going to make it public. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. I just, I I'm mean, curious. Obviously not, I, all the de- not all the details. But yes, exactly. Essentially, there's essentially how, like, 
very well, similar to what Paul did. It's just exactly. like how much money, how long. Guaranteed. Exactly. Yeah. It was 10 years, $10 million guaranteed. And, you know, Ricky could go out next year if he or two years, whenever his contract's up and say, OK, well, you know, I'm a two time world champion. I'm making 350 guaranteed a year, or 400 guaranteed. But we don't know the incentives of what the get yeah. freak is, you know, anything like that. But OK, so you I feel think until I think until there's agents involved to where they actually you know, it, it'd be the same thing as like if there was no re- realtors yep. and you're like trying to sell a house, how, how would you have any idea how much a house costs? I would have no idea how much a house costs. Exactly. So it's the same kind of thing of like right now, you know, everyone's kind of doing it individually. So no one is really knowing what. So I think making some of these contracts public in the sense of just how much money they're getting paid, I think that helps everyone else right now. Um, that is maybe getting a little bit underpaid, but yeah. you know, a hot, not necessarily a hot take, but kind of where I think eventually what might end up happening is people that move, move the needle. So they say in, in, for certain companies, I think they will start making more money. And then people that currently have sponsorships with companies that don't really move the needle, those companies will probably just drop those players. Gotcha. Because okay. right now manufacturers so, are, I, I don't want to sound like manufacturers are, aren't paying, you know, what they should be playing for players because they actually are paying a lot of players when they shouldn't be. Like there, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that they're helping out that from a business side of things doesn't really financially make sense, mm-hmm. but they're doing it because they're trying to keep people on tour and they're trying to help kind of continue to grow the sport. Because that, that, that is their brand that's traveling across the country in that van that that company might have helped to wrap for them and give them a monthly salary to go along. I think one of the toughest things and a lot of people saying, you know, Paul's contract being public was great and everything like that. But the thing is, is that Paul's a five-time world champion, two-time U.S. champion and multiple major winner. There's no one else playing the sport right now that is on that level. And so you got to think, okay, Paul's worth a million dollars a year. What is, you know, I'm say I'm 10, 25 rated. I'm playing great. What is Nick Carl worth? And so that's <laughs> well, where, well, so that's where, that's where you put, you put a lot of pressure on the manufacturers manufacturer themselves to, to, to give, to actually give you a value. And then it's also important for you to see what your value is as well. So I'm, you know, for me, for example, I'm able to kind of get an idea of what it costs. Like, I have a good idea of, obviously, because I do a bunch of other brand deals, what it costs to post an Instagram story, mm-hmm. what it costs to have a sponsor on my hat, what it costs to have a sponsor on my shirt. Um, I, I kind of have an idea of, like, what all those things cost. So that way, when someone wants to offer me something for me to do, I have some sort of kind of clue of what I feel like. And then you also just have to come up with a number in your head too, that you're happy with. Right. So that's, so that has happened a lot of times with me of where it's like, okay, my agent is negotiating with someone and we know that my rate for, let's say an Instagram post is like $15,000. Right. There are some times where the brand will just say, Hey, we want Brody to do an Instagram post. Uh, We've got a budget of $22,000. How does that sound? And we're like, um, uh, yeah, I think we can make that work, you mm-hmm. know, where I would have said yes to 15. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think like having a number in your head that you're happy with and then putting it on the people to be like, what am I worth to you? Like yeah. what you get to use my name, my likeness, you get to associate yourself with me. Mm-hmm. What is that worth to you? And then, you know, shopping around and seeing what that is and hopefully finding something that makes sense for you and makes it work. Yeah. Peace out. The Nick and Matt Show, a disc golf podcast designed for you, the disc golfer. Find the Nick and Matt Show on your favorite podcast platforms or stream us live exclusively on the Foundation Podcast YouTube channel.